couple things I want to show you. Um, an Ontario man dies after being denied a kidney transplant for being unvaccinated. And uh, so Sudbury, Ontario resident Garnet Harper died from kidney disease after he could not receive a transplant because why? Because he's a critical thinker, because he was following the science and did not want to get a vaccine. And he has died. Okay. I said, I'm not going to be participating in this program as long as people like my husband are not eligible to receive organs that are from the Trilin Trillium Network, said uh, Harper's wife, Megan, in an interview on independent journalism. Megan concluded by saying the fact that they call you while you're sitting next to your dying loved one and they ask you if they can have his organs. While meanwhile, he wasn't good enough to receive organs from them is, I can't describe the feeling. That is an absolutely sickening and shocking twist to all of that. Um, so Laura Ingram did us a huge favor and focused on Trudeau last night, and she even had Theo Fleury give comment. But here's a couple of Laura Ingram's remarks. Yeah. Yeah, he blames the vast right-wing conspiracy. There is an awful lot of misinformation and disinformation out there. Uh, people on social media, particularly fueled by the American right wing, are uh, spreading a lot of untruths. These are people in the far right who have consistently stood against Muslim rights in the Muslim community. But they are weaponizing the issue of LGBT. Of course, the angle was the first in cable to showcase Muslim parents, those who are fed up with sexual indoctrination squads and who are now working with social conservatives to stop the madness. Now, as for Trudeau, he's in his job for one reason, his last name. Well, maybe, maybe for another, maybe for his hair. It's pretty good. Now, personally, I love my Canadian friends and it's a gorgeous place. But we're not about to take moralistic lectures from people who allow China to directly influence their elections or to push more people to kill themselves or to turn truckers into public enemies number one. Trudeau is a rather silly, fatuous man who touts multiculturalism but really wants a dictatorship of ideas. Anyone who challenges his sacred cows may be canceled, punished, or, in some cases, even jailed. Hmm. Do you know what? I actually think that could be my content, like uh, the, the picture there that she had of the convoy. I know that exact place. I know where we were. And that kind of looked like my content. And it even looked like Aaron's arm in there, which is bizarre. Okay. Um, so here's the thing. Isn't it funny? You know, oh, the Muslims don't support the gender nonsense. Uh, but they don't get labeled right-wing extremists, right? That's reserved for Christians. Christians are right-wing extremists. Muslims, oh, they don't support the gender nonsense. You know, do you see the difference? Absolutely sickening. So Lieutenant Stephen Rogers uh, is talking here on why Americans should be concerned with what is happening in Canada right now. But Trudeau took things out of his country and placed them at the doorstep of millions of Americans when he blamed what he defines as the American right wing for the opposition he is receiving by Canadian citizens to his very own policies. The term American right wing is the same term used by the Biden administration, the Department of Justice, and the FBI when targeting conservatives, Republicans, parents attending school board meetings, and patriotic Americans fighting to preserve their freedoms, their liberties, and their individual rights. Additionally, his statement comes at a time when we in America are approaching a very critical presidential election, as well as congressional and state elections. Now, if that's not election interference by a foreign government, then what is? Presently, The Hague is reviewing thousands of pages of evidence regarding the actions of Trudeau. And this past week, the EU parliament heard testimony from a Canadian citizen victimized by government-sanctioned abuse and excessive force by the Canadian police. And the Ohio State Legislature here in the United States has already recommended that the Canadian government be placed on a religious watch list. 
In view of the fact that Trudeau has recklessly and without any justification attacked millions of Americans, the United States Congress cannot afford to sit idly by and allow a communist influencer like Trudeau to spread his propaganda without being held accountable. It's time for the United States Congress to address Trudeau and investigate exactly what is going on in Canada as it relates to United States national security. It's time for Congress to invoke the Truman and Reagan doctrine that commits the United States of America to fight and prevent the spread of communism everywhere on this planet, including Canada. I urge every American media outlet to follow events unfolding in Canada and every American patriot to contact their congressional representatives and urge them to address this matter sooner rather than later. Now let us keep our nations in prayer and remember that scripture in 2 Corinthians 3.17, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Well, that says to me that it's very important that we not only take the action we're taking politically, but we take that action in prayer, especially at this critical time in the history of our countries. Hmm. So I have something interesting to show you. Um, JT, if you could pull up my share, uh, Polyev Ally, Okay, this is John Baird. This is Pierre Polyev's uh, campaign manager and right-hand guy. Um, you know, he's he's definitely fully out in the Conservative Party, uh, being gay. and um, Right-hand guy helps Pierre Polyev to seal the leadership of the CPC. So Polyev ally calls Trudeau one of the most successful politicians of his generation. Is he speaking of Justin? Former cabinet minister John Baird introduced Trudeau at a conference held for Australian Canadian leaders. Here's the guy. Can't stand him for a lot of reasons. How he got let go from his position being an MP. Everyone knows. Um, they don't talk about it out loud, but people on the inn, they know. John Baird, former Minister of Foreign Affairs, speaks with guests during the Australia-Canada Economic Leadership Forum in Toronto on July 18th, 2023. One of, the, one of Conservative leader Pierre Polyev's most prominent supporters praised Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's political leadership during a conference on Tuesday. Am I missing something, JT? Are you a bit surprised too? Uh, it's a big party and we're not in it's a big party and we are not invited. <laughs> uh, wow. Last year, Baird was quick to endorse Polyev when he announced his bid for the conservative leadership. He also served as a national co-chair of Polyev's successful campaign for the top Tory job. But Baird praised Trudeau's political acumen when he introduced the prime minister on Monday. How close do you have to be to get someone to introduce you. See, I've been introduced at meetings. Um, I don't ask someone to introduce me who hates me or thinks that I'm not very good at my job. I ask an ally. I ask a friend or I go, yes, thank you, a supporter, a fan to introduce me when I'm about to speak. So, this guy would have give, been given full permission and asked to introduce the prime minister who's destroying our country. John Beard, ally to Pierre Polyev. Something smells. You all think that's okay? What do you think his, his buddy Pierre Polyev thought of that? Um, let's check. Pierre Polyev's outrage on Twitter. I bet he's furious. Do you think that he's furious, JT? That there's, he's like, how dare John Baird, um, you know, go against it. No, John Baird, Pierre Polyev's close buddy and, and supporter and helps him get in. He's the guy introducing Justin Trudeau. I'm going to lose my ever loving mind. Because that's insanity. I'll tell you who they weren't asking to introduce Trudeau. 
Maxime Bernier or anyone who is on Maxime Bernier's side because we want nothing more than to get rid of Trudeau. We just have a problem with the fact that we kind of think the Pierre Polyev and the Justin Trudeau are two peas in a pod, two sides of the same coin. What, what kind of nonsense is this? I'm, am I the only one? Like, don't get mad at me. I know a lot of my viewers, you're conservatives because we're conservative at heart. And we believe in standing up for, for what's right. For conservative values, but they don't, everyone. They're introducing each other. This is really weird. John Baird is introducing and calling the worst prime minister in Canadian history a stand-up, wonderful, successful politician. John Baird is introducing Trudeau. What am I not getting, everybody? Listen, you cannot believe what someone says. You must believe their actions. All of you who who are on a first name basis with Pierre, could you let me know how it is that, that he would want his right hand man, man dude, to be doing this and, and not be livid? Are we wanting to get rid of Trudeau or are we propping him up? as a, one of the most successful politicians of all time. And the enemy is introducing him at a, a, an event. I'm actually, I, like, I, I feel my blood pressure going up right now. Do you understand what I'm, what I'm saying, everyone? Is there, is there anyone in the comments, JT, that can point out anything that I'm missing? That, that, oh, oh. Oh, okay. And the hug. Pat, pat, pat. No one in their right minds patting Justin Trudeau on the back. Look what he's done to our country. Look how he's treated the freedom people. Look what he's done. He's trying to take away our news. He's not successful. He's a puppet. He's a puppet of the WEF. So are you, John Baird. What is going on? What is going on? Y'all think this is okay? I do not think this is okay. And I was actually looking for something different when I found this article just now. I was looking for um, where Pierre Polyev did not like the shirt of someone uh, at the, the uh, Calgary Stampede. They were wearing a shirt that basically said, <sighs> so mad. They were wearing a shirt that basically said, um, hey, if you're a, a gay person or something, thank a, straight, thank a straight person for your life because straight people had babies and you were one of them. <laughs> and, and what happened? Um, Pierre, actually, he was asked about it. Oh, and he had to say, oh, he just didn't really like, he, he, he didn't like that shirt. He was not supportive of that shirt. No. Uh, and it said straight pride on it. So you can be full of pride about being gay and homosexual and, and march in all of your parades and all of that. And you can be totally proud about prancing around naked in front of children as they have recently done. It's so disgusting and disturbing that I can't even stand it. And Pierre Polyev has a problem that a guy wore straight pride. Let this sink in. We have a problem. Don't blame me, the messenger. Think about it. Think about it, everyone. Reevaluate. Think it through. The propaganda, the lies. We've always voted for them. 
What kind of shenanigans is this? I'm sickened. I'm sick of it. I'm sick. I feel literally sick right now. <sighs> we have another video. The UK's Majid Nawaz on why voting patterns among Muslims may be shifting back towards conservative parties. Well, the conservative Muslims better realize in Canada that Pierre Polyev and all of them, they voted in Bill C-4 to prevent and incarcerate a parent who would tell their child not to transition. Take a look. Sorry. Social conservatives. Who are the social conservatives now when Pierre Polyev has his right-hand person, he chose her because she's gay. Let's, let's not mince words. She's a lesbian, so she got to be put into a position of power in the Conservative Party of Canada. Praising the pride flag. Upset you're wearing a shirt about straight pride. And now your right-hand dude, John Baird. Who's the social conservatives in Canada then, everyone? Oh, won't, won't lift a finger to protect the unborn. The Conservative Party of Canada will not protect the unborn at all. You're going to vote for them, though, aren't you? Some of you? This is a hard conversation. I like hard conversations. Don't turn the channel. Don't flip off that video yet. You're mad, right? You don't like this. Laura Lynn, you're going to get Trudeau back in. Trudeau back in? Pierre Polyev and his, his ilk like him. He's a successful politician. Or John Baird would never, ever have gone up and be the introduced. How close do you have to be? How many beers have you had together? Don't be mad at me. We have a problem. Who's, who should the Muslims be voting for? Who's speaking out against transgenderism? Who wants to defend the unborn? If you've been watching this show, you know who that is. I just leave it with you. Because we have a problem, everyone. And we need to get our heads out of the sand and stop doing what we've always done that has never worked. And there needs to be a righteous rebellion against evil. Starts with you. Starts with you telling two people and then 10 people and then shout it from the rooftops. And let's get on the same page. Christia Freeland talking about support for the Ukraine. I'm a finance minister. And if you were to say to me, what is the one thing that G7 finance ministers, G7 governments this year could do that's actually in our power, right? We don't control COVID. We don't control global supply chains. We don't control whether there will be immaculate disinflation or not. One thing where we have some real practical levers is we can help Ukraine win clearly, definitively. And if we do that, if that happens this year, you know it as well as I do, Fareed. That would be a huge boost to the global economy. Now, I just think that we need to help to bring about wars and just give all of our, our help and support to them. It doesn't, you know, we can't control the, the people that are homeless in Canada that are, well, there's quite a few tents coming up Highway 1. <laughs> we can't control that. We can't control COVID. I mean, we tried. We locked you down, you son of guns, but we couldn't control it. But we can control this. And we can use all your money to do it. And we're going to try. Tucker asks Mike Pence why he is more concerned. You see, in the United States, there is the Republican Party, but there's the rhinos, Republican in name only, rhino. And then there's the true 
Republicans. And uh, Tucker Carlson, he is just getting started, right? They got rid of him at Fox News. <laughs> he is going to get unleashed on the world. So take a look at this brief one-minute clip, basically, on Mike Pence, why he's more concerned that the Ukraine does not have tanks while Americans are suffering. Take a look. Along the way, the Biden administration has been slow in providing military support. Make no mistake about this. We promised them 33 Abrams tanks in January. I heard again two weeks ago in Ukraine, they still don't have them. We've been telling them we'll train their F-16 pilots, but now they're saying maybe January we'll let somebody transfer some jets. I'm sorry, Mr. Vice President, have you, I know you're running for president. You are, distra you. You are distressed notice. that the Ukrainians don't have enough American tanks Every city in the United States has become much worse over the past three years. Yeah. Drive around. There's not one city that's gotten better in the United States. Right. And it's visible. Our economy has degraded. The suicide rate has jumped. Public filth and disorder and crime have exponentially increased. Right. And yet your concern is that the Ukrainians, a country most people can't find on a map, who've received tens of billions of U.S. tax dollars, don't have enough tanks. Right. I think it's a fair question to ask, like, where's the concern for the United States in that? Well, it's not my concern. <laughs> Tucker, I've heard that routine from you before, but that's not my concern. It's <laughs> oh. <laughs> not my concern, the, 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 the American people. That's, that's not my concern. I'm not getting kickbacks and bribes and whatever, you know, to care about them. <gasps> what is going on when Christia Freeland, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Pierre Polyev, Mike Pence, all care about the Ukraine? Okay, Tucker on Trump. What does he have to say about Trump? Let's see. But because Joe Biden and his many allies, from Chuck Schumer to Mitch McConnell to Paul Ryan and every single news anchor on all of television, all of them believe that Ukraine, its borders, its future, its infrastructure are all more important than the town that you live in. They sincerely think that. And it's obvious. Everyone in power thinks that, except for Donald Trump. Whatever else you say about him, Trump is the one guy with an actual shot of becoming president who dissents from Washington's long-standing pointless war agenda. And for that, that one fact, they are trying to take Trump out before you can vote for him. And that should upset you more than anything that's happened in American politics in your lifetime. Hmm. And it does. One more. Tucker asks a uh, Republican presidential candidate, is it Asa? There was a leader in the Bible called Asa. Um, Hutchinson, how many COVID shots you took? Take a look. And how many COVID shots did you take, and how do you feel about it now, in retrospect? How many COVID shots did you take? Zero. <laughs> Wasn't there any more clapping? It's all cut off at the clapping. Uh, obviously, he didn't take zero. So... <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, no. Well, Tucker, yeah, zero. But the other guy. He never answered. Well, he never answered. Mm hmm. What? So you think he didn't? He, what do you think? He took, he took two, at least. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Anything more, JT? My website is lauralyn.tv. And um, I'm upset today. I'm upset after seeing that. Could. Uh, JT, would you just mind, uh, sorry, before, just, just do the share. Just here, do this share here. Let's, uh, let's have a look. That's John Baird, Pierre Polyev's right-hand guy, praising. Oh, nice. Oh, did you see that handshake and the hand pad? Oh, oh, John Baird. Oh, I, I think he's praising him. Let's get that. Let's make sure that we get a piece of that uh, for, for, for Twitter. Beautiful. Oh, uh, such a beautiful moment between friends. Any friend of Justin Trudeau is not a friend of mine at all. I don't like what's going on. Smell a rat. We have a very big problem. All right, lauralyn.tv. If you like this kind of programming, 
would you help us to do it? Because Justin Trudeau is not helping me. After everything that I'm saying and all of that, I'm actually not getting help from nobody. No, no political parties are helping me. None. I'm not getting any government support. And I am not getting any money from a big ministry to keep doing this every day. I have you. And I love you. <laughs> Thank you for supporting what we do. You can go to our website. You can make a small donation, a large donation. You can do it incognito. Uh, you can uh, be anonymous. I will never know your name. Nobody else will either. And uh, you can just make a donation, help us to get through all of this. And... It means the world to us because you're like family. And when I'm here, it's like speaking to friends. And how I know this is because when I travel the country, one of the extreme uh, beautiful things I get to do is meet some of you. And you greet me sometimes with tears in your eyes saying, I feel like I know you. And I try to say to you, you do know me and I know you. Because if you have loved what I've been talking about, then we have kindred spirits. And so we are united. We're united in understanding the world, having the same view, mostly that we're in trouble. And it means a lot that you support this work. And um, you can do e-transfers as well to Laura Lynn Live at protonmail.com. We'll make it easy for you. And then we also have a snail mail. And we'll just leave that up for a second there. If you would like to send us a letter and uh, some love, that would be great. Um, and even if you can just send a letter, that's fine too. I read all of them. Pick them up. It's always a fun time. Yesterday I uh, did that. I picked up some mail and I uh, went to a little place, had a little cup of coffee and a tiny bite to eat, and I read the, the mail and I was encouraged and blessed because sometimes doing all of this is uh, just a real... You know, it's a tough time. Um, I want to read from 1 Timothy 6 today. And I'm pretty sure I've read it before because I've already got it marked. And this Bible here, I'm preparing to leave for the next generation. It's a leather-bound edition. And it's pink and tough just like me. So in 1 Timothy 6, it talks about false teachers and the love of money. Well, I don't need my glasses for this Bible, only my dad's. These are the things you are to teach and insist on. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, they are conceited and understand nothing. In other words, they're idiots. Basically, Paul is saying, if you are not adhering yourself to the Word of God, in which you get your information, your knowledge, the principles by which you live, the concepts, the science, if it is not from the Word of God, then you're conceited, you think you're a know-it-all, you're arrogant, and you have put yourself above God's laws, and you understand nothing. Don't you love that? They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between people of corrupt mind. So listen to this. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words. Hasn't the use of words changed a lot in recent years. What used to mean something, it doesn't really mean that anymore. And they like to use words to confuse. Words to bring about, uh, you know, a propaganda to their point of view, to their ideology. They use words, words that do not have a correct meaning. And they try to tell you what it means. And then they want you to use new words. Oh, like sis and whatever. I have to get this Matt Walsh video about the origin of all of that. It's fascinating. I need to get that. 
So who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain? Wow. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Are you content? We have to be content in God, but not content with what's going on in our world. We have to expose darkness. We have to speak. We have to use our voices. You know your tongue, use your tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can convince someone of the truth if you speak. If you do not speak, they will never know. You can give knowledge to people who are unlearned and understand nothing, as it says. You can use your tongue, your words, your knowledge to bring the truth. Are you willing? Are you willing to be part of that great change? To be content with God's laws and to speak that truth? Are you willing to do that? For we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. The only thing that matters is what we do for God. Be a part of the solution. Stand strong, everyone. And when there's evil, call it out.